Hi, my name is Carrie Rice. I work with the Maine CDC. And I am the Healthcare Epidemiology Improvement Coordinator. And today we're going to be discussing how to perform a risk assessment. And so what is a risk assessment? A risk assessment is a process that is used to look at the entire sequencing of a potential event to identify any failures or points of vulnerability that might occur within that event and to help prioritize through a logical process areas that can be improved to account for the actual or potential impact that there may be and and or to implement what we consider risk mitigations or precautions to help either reduce the amount of potential risk that may happen due to the process or action or event and or potentially sometimes completely eliminate the risk. And so there are different types of risk assessments. There's a proactive risk assessment, which is encouraged to be performed when there is a potential process, vulnerability, or high risk action or event that may result in a poor outcome. And perhaps there isn't any prescriptive guidance or regulations or detailed out instructions for the process. And so this gives you an opportunity to look at this process or action is in its entirety to identify what is our best course of action. You may have heard of other types of risk assessments in healthcare settings, and there's something called a pre-construction risk assessment, which anytime there's any planned or unplanned demolition, construction, or renovation, this is a process to go through to look at potential risks as it relates to anyone that may, might be within that, that facility at that time. Then there's also, you may have heard of the facility infection control risk assessment, which is a comprehensive proactive activity that uses an all hazards approach to evaluate an infection control program as it relates to services rendered, care provided for residents, patients, and any interactions with staff, et cetera. And that is a very detailed process for which we're, we're not going to cover in, in this presentation. And so the focus of this presentation is that proactive general risk assessment, which we're going to talk about. So now let's go through the process of performing a proactive general risk assessment. So once you've described your process action or the event that you're going to be looking at, the first step that you're going to do is identify any potential risks. And so what are the potential hazards or your process vulnerabilities, any, any failure points? What is the likelihood of harm if this action or event process were to occur? The second step is to determine the scope. And so this, you wanna see how broad the scope might be, who might be harmed by this issue, action, or event, and how might they be harmed? Will it have interaction with residents, patients, staff, visitors? Is, is there a larger, broader scope? And so you, you wanna determine how far could the impact be? The third step is to evaluate the risks and determine risk mitigations, otherwise known as precautions. And so you want to look at what is the likelihood that a hazard will occur and if it is to occur, how severe might the consequences be if, if that hazard were to happen? And can I put any interventions into place to reduce the level of risk? Can I put any risk mitigations, any steps? And so that is something you wanna take time to really go through and look at all of the points of contact, any failure points, your scope, et cetera, to determine these potential interventions that, that you might be able to implement. The fourth step is to decide, document, and take action. And so this is where you will decide, is the process going to proceed? And, and if it is going to proceed, what am I going to put in place? What risk mitigations, what steps, what processes? And you wanna make sure whatever you're going to do, you have in place prior to imp implementation. And there might be a few things that you need to do during that implementation. Perhaps it's education and training of staff. Perhaps it is updating of policies and procedures. Maybe you need special equipment. Maybe you need a special setup, planning, et cetera. So there might be different things you have to do to put in place during that implementation process. And so the fifth step is after the process, the action, the event, or what it, whatever it is that you were describing and, and doing this risk assessment on, after it has taken place or occurred, you need to review the outcomes. And so what you wanna do is 
you want to identify what was the impact of the risk mitigations that I put in place. So were my risk mitigations or my precautions effective in decreasing that risk, preventing harm when that action or process occurred? Did I learn anything? Is, is there anything that I might do differently in the future? Have I identified any additional points of failure or vulnerabilities in my overall process that maybe I was not aware of before as I look at this overall view review? Now, when you review the outcomes, it's important to make sure that you involve key stakeholders. Just as I should have mentioned in the beginning of this, you want to make sure during this entire process that you are involving key stakeholders in whatever action or process you might have. And it, it might change each time you have a different uh, situation or, or assessment that you need to do. So you want to make sure they're involved from start to finish and also in that after action review. So now let's walk through an example. I am using a tool template that is a general template drafted off of a general risk management type risk assessment that you can find on the main infection prevention forum website of which you found this video tutorial. And so I'm gonna walk through how that might work, noting that this form is customizable. And so if there are areas or items you want to add onto it to help your process, feel free to do that. It's a Word document and it and is editable, editable. And so let's just look at how this form works. What is nice about this is it offers you not only the ability to have a comprehensive review of your risk assessment, but also a place to do your documentation as you go through the process. So kind of like a one stop shop. And so you'll notice the form has a place, facility name, date, title. There's a section where you want to describe your proposed process or the issue. And so you want to add some detail here on what are you actually performing the risk assessment on. There's a, then there is an area to put persons who are involved in the discussion. And so here is where you probably want to list titles and names of the individuals. And it might change, as we spoke before, depending upon who is involved in the risk assessment. And so in this example, we are looking at a situation in a long-term care facility where a visitor who is not fully vaccinated for COVID-19 wants to visit a resident, but the visitor is physically unable to wear a face covering. And in this current situation, it is federal and state recommendation that in this setting of this long-term care facility, face covering source control is, is a requirement. And so the persons that were deemed appropriate as key stakeholders for this instance were the infection preventionist, the residence activities coordinator, the director of nursing, and the medical director. And so those are the persons who are involved in filling out this information. And so next you get to the section, which is really the meat of the risk assessment. And so as you will see, there is a section for the potential impact areas. And so there's some major key components, such as resident care and safety, resident satisfaction. You could change this to say patient, if it's a, a, a hospital situation, staff safety, visitor safety, equipment, financial, other, and a section if perhaps you have had any Sentinel events or other quality issues pertaining to this issue and you have some historical data you want to include in this overall review. And so the columns next to that going towards the right, you have column which really is your reason or argument as to why the, the issue or process or action should take place and be implemented. And then conversely, you have your reasons why it should not be. And so what you're going to do is you're, you're going to fill out each of the sections that are applicable to this situation. And noting that the assessment information will be specific to the process issue being reviewed. And don't feel that you have to fill out every single row of, of the potential impact area for every single risk assessment. Really, you wanna tailor it to the, the thing you are looking at. And so in this instance, there's a you know potential, we identified financial implications, but there might not always be that. And so really tailor it to make it the most appropriate for your risk assessment. So as we work through this and we look at this example, in this instance, one of the, the reasons or arguments for allowing this visitation was that allowing visitation will improve the overall mental well-being of the resident and the resident is fully vaccinated. An argument not to is there's risk to the individual and other residents and there's challenges in managing visitor flow if a, a visitor themselves cannot participate in appropriate source control. Then you can kind of move down and we'll just look for example at like financial. 
And so in this instance, there was a reason or argument to not performing this, this action in financial due to potentials for increased needs of testing, if there was an outbreak, increased need for PPE, et cetera. And so you might not always have information in both sides of the column of the, the pro versus con either, and you really want to look at it. And so we'll move to the next slide. Then it moves down to a next session where you're going to look at your decision making process. And so as you'll notice with that risk assessment, it's not always black and white. It is going to take some critical thinking and some review of all, all the points. And so in this instance, the decision was that the risk versus benefits were reviewed for the specific event of this visitation, and it was decided to be allowed with the following below mitigation requirements. And then that next section that says proposed process, including mitigation requirements, are the bullet points of their risk mitigation and their precautions that are going to be put in place for this visitation to occur. Noting this as well might also be specific depending upon your process or action that you are reviewing as part of your risk assessment. Then moving down, you have your section where you might put if there's any needs for policy changes and education plan, what are you going to do, who's responsible for it, and then the monitoring section. So what type of monitoring is going to take place either during this action or after, what's the frequency, and who is responsible for that? Then what you should do is pick your review date. So when are you going to do that last step, that step five, and review the overall process after it has happened and, and who's going to be responsible for sort of setting that up and getting that coordinated. Then the tool in this instance has a section in the same in the same document where you have review of documentation. And this is where you can put the date, who was involved, you could put their titles, and what was the outcome. That you could also add a section to say, is there any further follow up needed? What are we going to do? And you could continue on for for really as however long you needed to do in this overall process. And so the important thing to note is that a risk assessment does not necessarily remove the risk, but it helps to identify areas where interventions can be put into place to reduce the overall potential risk. And so that's just something to keep in mind when you're doing a risk assessment is it isn't necessarily going to take away the risk, but it's helping you determine, can I do this in a logical, safe way that I feel I can implement enough risk mitigation strategies to keep all of my patients, residents, staff, visitors, et cetera, safe. And so it's a nice process you can use as this documentation. I should just note the example that was used in in this instance is just an example. It's not a specific answer for how you should combat if you happen to have the situation. So just note that it's, it's not written guidance. It is just an example. And so on this side, you will find that we have links to some of the references for which we developed the tool and our guidance on risk assessment performance. If you have any questions about how to conduct a proactive general risk assessment, please feel free to email us at mecdc.hai at maine.gov, and we are happy to help you. And as a reminder, you can find the documented Word document draft tool on the Maine Infection Prevention Forum website if that is something you are interested in utilizing. I thank you for your time and I hope that this informational tutorial has been helpful.